This time, we're going to discuss about the other important principles in mechanics, which is the law of conservation of momentum. So we begin by applying the impulse momentum theorem to a mid-air collision between two objects. So we have here a bigger object, which is the red color one here. This is our object number one. And with a smaller object, the purple one, it is our second object. And they are about to collide in mid-air. So they have uh, different masses, which is M1 and M2, and approaching with the initial velocity of B01 and B02. So the collection of objects being studied is referred to as the system. So in this case, the system contains only the two objects. So they will interact during the collision and then depart with a final velocity of B1, uh, final velocity 1 and final velocity 2. Okay, so because this is the collision and during the collision, we have these internal forces that interact between them. So, so the object number one exert a uh, force toward the smaller object or object number two. And at the same time, the second object um, give a force directed to the first object. So we have two types of forces act on the system. So first is the internal forces. So this is the forces that the objects within the system exert on each other. So particularly in this illustration, during this collision, these are the internal forces. And the second type is the external forces. So these external forces are exerted by the um, external system or the surrounding around our object, such as the weight due to the gravity, friction, and air resistance. But for simplicity in our problem or in our discussion, we're going to ignore such forces. Okay, so during this collision, we have these two forces, F21 and F12, which means F21 is the force exerted towards object number two from object number one, while this F12 is the force exerted by, by object number two toward object number one. So these two forces are action-reaction forces. As is stated by the third law of motion, so these two forces are same or equal in magnitude, but in opposite direction. So F12 is equal to, oh, sorry. Negative F21. So again, these are the two internal forces that each object exerted toward, toward each other. And after the collision, we have this resulting difference in velocity, or we're going to have a final velocity, which is Vf1 and Vf2. Okay. So applying our um, impulse momentum theorem, we know that the force or the average force is equal to change in momentum divided by change in time. Meaning force exerted is time rate of change in momentum. So if we're going to um, substitute this equation with our first one, with this action-reaction, so we're going to have the change in momentum of object one, 
the time rate of this is equal to the negative of change in momentum of object 2 divided by the time interval. So we can cancel out our time interval by multiplying time interval both sides of the equation. And the change in momentum is the final momentum of the first object minus the initial momentum, which is equal to the change in momentum of object number two. So equating this one, we can have a result of the final momentum of object number one plus the final momentum of object number two is equal to the initial momentum of object number one plus the initial momentum of object number two. So this is our Uh, con law conservation of momentum, which is the final momentum of after the collision is equal to the initial momentum before the collision. Thus, the total momentum is always equal to zero if and only if the summation of external forces that acts or exerted by the environment towards our system this will be equal also with zero okay so if we're going to use the mass or interpret this with the mass and velocity we're going to have mass 1 times the final velocity of object 1 plus mass 2. Final velocity of mass 2 is equal to mass 1, initial velocity 1, plus mass 2, initial velocity 2. So this is our law of conservation of energy so by the word conservation meaning we have a constant linear con momentum so the total linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant or being co conserved so an isolated system is one of which the vector sum of the average external forces acting on the system is always equal to zero